Welcome to Cookie's Maths and Science Hub. Today, we're going to be talking about the states of matter. There are three main states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. You would have encountered many of these throughout your everyday life, and water is the most common one we discuss. Let's get into each state of matter and discuss more about it in detail. Let's start off with solids. In our diagram, the circles represent either particles or molecules. In solids, these molecules are packed tightly together in regular repeating patterns. They can vibrate in place, but are held in a confined area and move very little. This means they have very low kinetic energy, remembering that kinetic energy is energy associated with movement. If you need more information regarding kinetic energy, see our energy video for far more details surrounding energy and its types. Our next state of matter is liquids. The molecules that make up a liquid flow easily around one another. Whilst this diagram doesn't show their movement, they are moving, flowing around one another. They fill the space of the container they are in, therefore taking on the shape of the container they are in. They are kept from flying apart by attractive forces between them. They do have some kinetic energy, but not as much as gases, which we will discuss soon. Gases and the molecules that make up gases have the most kinetic energy when comparing the three states of matter. This means that the molecules that make up a gas fly in all directions, often with great speed, hence their high energy. Because these atoms and molecules are so far apart, the attractive forces between the individual molecules is insignificant, meaning they are often flying off by themselves. So, from our discussion, we can see that solids are rigid in their structure, liquids are more free flowing, and gases, well, gases are spread everywhere. If you think about the real world examples of this, and let's refer again to water, water as a solid is ice, as a liquid, it is just our standard water, and as a gas, it is water vapor. Ice will keep its rigid shape, Liquid will fill the container it's in, so like the water will fill the container it's in, in this example. And the gas, the water vapour, will go everywhere. The important thing to note is, the energy increases as we move from solid through liquid to gas of the molecules present. So, we have our three states of matter, and we've stated water as our main example. Thinking about water, when you take an ice cube out of the freezer, over time, it will melt and become a liquid state. This means we can transform one state of matter to another. So let's discuss these processes now and see how we move from a solid through to a liquid to a gas and back the other way as well. Let's start off with the more basic ones, going from a solid to a liquid and then to a gas. We know that we need to increase the energy of the molecules to make it transform from one state to another because energy increases as we go from solid to a liquid to a gas. Pause the video for a second and just see if you can think of any ways to increase the energy of something. It's okay if you didn't think of one, but one of the main ways we can increase the energy of a particle is by applying heat. And thinking again about our ice example, the ice melts into water because it is exposed to more heat. This means to go from a solid to a liquid state, we need to go through melting. Once more, to go from a liquid to a gas state, we have to increase the energy of the present molecules. This can once again be done by heating the liquid. Again, using our water example, when you boil the liquid, or boil water that is, it turns to water vapor its gaseous form because it excites and increases the energy of those molecules. This can also occur through evaporation, which is the same basic process, but is just another term for the same process as boiling. Overall, we classify this in the fancy term of vaporization, 
This covers all different ways the liquid can transform into a gas through the increase of energy in the molecules. To finish off our little triangle diagram, we can go from a gas to a solid. Now this one is less common and a little more complicated. This is known as deposition. This occurs when the substance in its gaseous form gets deposited, usually as crystals or some other matter quickly getting frozen, decreasing the energy of those particles and bypasses directly the intermediate liquid state. Using our water example again, this one's a bit more out there, but it happens when water vapor in the atmosphere changes directly into ice. We commonly see this in the formation of frost. You might see it on your morning lawns. This is the water vapor in the atmosphere being deposited or going through deposition and hence changing from its gas form into a solid. We can, of course, go the other way in the triangle as well. So, starting with our liquid, let's start in the middle. To go from a liquid to a solid, we have to decrease the energy of the particles or reduce the temperature. Thinking of our water example, to go from normal water to ice, we must freeze the water. As such, freezing takes us from our liquid to solid form. To go from our gas to liquid, on the other side of the triangle now, we have to go through a process called condensation, which is where water vapor becomes liquid or any gas form into its liquid form, obviously most common in water. This can happen one of two ways. Either the air is cooled to a point where it becomes dew and becomes that liquid form, or it becomes saturated so that there is too much liquid. The molecules are too close together, so it must become that liquid form. Finally, to go from a solid to a gas is known as sublimation. Sublimation often gets confused with a lot of chemical reactions where things react with oxygen to transform from a solid to a gas, such as wood burning and providing smoke, as this is what's known as a combustion reaction. Sublimation is caused by a absorption of heat, which provides enough energy for the molecules to overcome the forces that would make them go through the liquid phase first and transform straight from a solid to a gas. If this sounds interesting to you, I'd advise you to research it a bit further, as there is, as there is a lot of complicated science involved with sublimation, involving different pressures in the atmosphere and such. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you now have a good understanding of the three states of matter and how we can go from one state to another. If you're interested in further reading, I would suggest looking up sublimation or perhaps even the fourth state of matter, which often doesn't get discussed, known as plasma. Hopefully you'll watch some of our other videos and learn something new as well.